Welcome to an introduction on the TVM Solver application. In this video, we're going to look at what is the TVM Solver, how to locate the TVM Solver, how to determine the values of the variables for the TVM Solver. Then we'll look at some important tips about the TVM Solver. And finally, we'll learn how to use the TVM Solver to solve finance application problems with a few examples. Let's get started. The TVM Solver stands for Time Value Money Solver. The TVM Solver is an application that allows you to quickly solve compound interest problems, including annuities and loans, without using the formulas. When we first looked at compound interest, we learned about the formula A equals P naught times one plus R over N raised to the NT. You can use this formula to solve all compound interest problems. But the focus of this video is to show you an easier way to solve compound interest problems. The nice thing about the TVM solver is it not only allows us to solve compound interest problems, but also problems involving annuities and loans, which we'll look at in a later section. Let's look at how to locate the TVM solver. If you look at the description of this video, you'll find a link to a free TVM Solver website application. If you have a newer version of the TI-84 calculator, it may include the TVM Solver application. To locate the TVM Solver on the TI-84, press the Apps button, then choose Option 1 for Finance, and then Option 1 again for the TVM Solver. Let me show you how to access the TVM Solver now. This is the Time Value Money Solver application that I've linked in the video description below. If you're using the TI-84 calculator, you can access the TVM Solver by pressing Apps and then selecting Option 1 for Finance and then Option 1 again for the TVM Solver. Both the web application and the TI-84 TVM Solver involve the same variables. In I percent PV, PMT, FV, PY, CY, and PMT again. Let's take a few minutes to learn what these variables represent and how you can determine them by reading each problem statement. As we look at the TVM solver variables, please note that the variables will be similar to the variables used in the formula, but they are slightly different. So if you're using the TVM Solver application, you want to make sure you understand the variables that we're going to cover right now. Capital N is the total number of payments or compounding periods. Typically, this is N times T, where N is the number of compounding periods per year, and T is the time in years. I percent is the annual interest rate or APR. For the TVM Solver, you will need to enter the rate as a percentage and not as a decimal. PV is the present value. This is the principal or starting amount. PMT is the payment amount. Payments must be equal, regular payments, same payment each month, quarter, year, etc. FV stands for the future value. The future value is the accumulated value or the end amount. PY is the number of payment periods per year. CY is the number of compounding periods per year. The PMT at the end indicates when the payments are made. For this class, we keep PMT set at N, indicating that they are end of the month payments. So the PMT at the bottom will be set at end for the duration of this course. Now, let me talk about a few important tips about the TVM solver. First, CY will always be the same as PY. So the number of compounding periods will always be the same as the number of payment periods. You'll notice if you change the value of PY, the TVM solver will automatically change the value of CY. Cash flow out is when you're paying money out. These are considered a negative with the TVM solver. 
Cash inflows, which are money coming in, are considered positive value. When you use the TVM solver, you have to think about which direction the money is flowing. If you are paying the money out of your pocket, then that is considered a cash flow out and it's a negative value. If money is being paid to you, then that is a cash inflow and it should be a positive value. This is probably one of the biggest differences between the TVM solver and the formulas. With the formulas, you don't have to think about the direction of the cash flow, but with the TVM solver, you must consider the direction of the cash flow. And finally, deposits and loan payments are negative because they represent an amount you must pay out every month. Even if you're just putting money into a savings account, Essentially, you need to look at that as you are taking money out of your pocket and putting it or paying it into a savings account. So that is a negative cash flow because it's coming out of your pocket and into a savings account that it will be viewed as a negative number with the TVM solver. Always just think about is the money going right into my pocket or am I paying that out of my pocket into either an account or on top of a loan. Here are the steps on how to solve finance problems using the TVM solver. And then we'll put everything together by looking at a few examples. So first you'll want to open the TVM solver application, whether you're looking at the web application or the application on your TI-84 calculator. You'll enter the known values for the variables. You'll skip the unknown value for which you're trying to solve for. Finally, solve for the unknown values by pressing the solve button on the web application. If you're using the TI-84, you need to use the arrows to go back to the variable you want to solve for, then press alpha and then enter. Let's take a look at our first example. Here's the problem statement. If you invest $3,000 in an investment account paying 3% interest compounded quarterly, how much will the account be worth in 10 years? The first thing we need to do is we need to identify the, all of the values for the variables that are given in the problem and determine which one we're trying to solve for. Let's just start at the top. N is the total number of payments or compounding periods. So since we're told that interest is compounded quarterly, that means interest will be paid four times per year times 10 years for a total of 40 payments. I percent, which is the annual interest rate or IPR, is three for 3%. Remember, we do not convert the percentage rate to a decimal for these problems. PV, which stands for the present value, is our principal or starting amount. The problem says that we invest $3,000 in an investment account. So our principal is $3,000. However, we need to think about the cash flow. That's money that I'm paying out because it's leaving my pocket and going into an account. So our present value is actually going to be negative $3,000 because it's money we're paying out. PMT, which stands for our payment amount, these are regular payments that we're making to the account. This is one lump sum that we're investing at one time. The problem does not say that we are making any additional contributions to this account. So we can assume the quarterly payment to this account is zero. The future value or the accumulated end value is actually what we're looking for. How much will the account be worth in 10 years? So we're actually looking for our future value. This is what we're gonna solve for. PY is the number of payment periods per year, and CY is the number of compounding periods per year. These will be the same. Since interest is compounded quarterly, we know that there are gonna be four payment periods and four compound periods per year. And finally, you should see that the last variable, our PMT, is fixed at end. Now let's go over to our calculator and use the TVM solver to solve this application. 
I'm going to use the TI-84 calculator to solve this, but it would be the same if you're using the web application. To locate the TVM solver, I'm going to press the apps button, then option one for finance and option one again for TVM solver. Now let's enter our value. So N was 40, I percent was three. Our present value was negative 3000. Make sure when you enter a negative number on the TI-84 calculator, you're using the negative key, which is down toward the bottom near enter and not the subtraction key. So PV is negative 3000. PMT is zero. Our future value is unknown. So I'm just going to skip that for a minute. PY is 4 and CY is 4. Now I ultimately want to solve for my future value, so I'll arrow back up to FV and then I'll press the alpha key and then enter to solve. So now looking at our answer here, we know that the future value is going to be $4,045.05. Rounding to the nearest cent. We found that in 10 years, this account will be worth $4,045.05. Let's take a look at our second problem. This problem says, how much would you need to deposit in an account now in order to have $4,000 in the account in 10 years? Assume the account earns 3% interest compounded monthly. Once again, let's go back and identify all of the values of the variables for this problem. N is the total number of payments. In this case, interest is compounded monthly. So we have 12 compounding periods and the money is going to be in the account for 10 years. So that gives us 120 payments in this account. The annual interest rate is said to be 3%. In this case, I don't know the present value. I'm looking for how much would you need to deposit. So I'm trying to find the present value or the starting amount we're going to invest in this account. The payment account is once again zero. We are not making any further contributions to this account. The future value is going to be $4,000. That will be a positive value because essentially that will be money that is paid to me at the end of the 10 year period. PY and CY are going to be the same. Since this is compounded monthly, we know there are going to be 12 payment periods and 12 compounding periods. Once again, let's go back to our TVM solver to solve this problem. Since I still have the TVM solver application open, I'm just going to overwrite the quantities that I have here. So N is going to be 120. I percent is still three. My present value, I don't know what that is. So I'm just going to skip that for right now. It's okay that negative 3000 is still in there from the previous problem. The program will overwrite that. So just skip it for right now. Payments are zero since we're not making any further contributions. We know the future value will be $4,000 and there will be 12 payments and compounding periods per year. And if you notice, as soon as you change one, it changes the other. Now to solve for the present value, arrow back up to present value, press the green alpha key, and then enter to run the program. And we get negative $2,964.38. That value is negative because that's money I need to pay out now in order to have $4,000 in this account in the future. So we must deposit $2,964.38 in order to have $4,000 in this account 
in 10 years. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.